Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are here to explore the popular explosion of ChatGPT and what it means that all of a sudden all of the email newsletters are about AI. What does it mean when everybody, your coaches, your, your facilitators, your, your grocers are talking about AI all of a sudden? Um, and what are the implications for that on meetings and facilitation? Today, our host is Marie DeBost. Marie uh, does wonderful work exploring this topic and accessibility, and she'll tell you a little bit more about herself soon. But before I turn it over to Marie, I have a, a request for all of you. My request is that you would, in the chat, quickly open that link. That's the link to our feedback form. And we know these are 90 minute sessions. Not everybody manages to actually stick for all 90 minutes all of the time. But Marie, because this is an experimental community, it's an experimental workshop, would love your input. So please open that. So whether you uh, wanna do so now or later, you can make sure you remember to give her some feedback. And with that, uh, Marie, it is all yours. Thank you so much for bringing this to this community. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for your lovely introduction and welcome to the people who have uh, who are joining us right now. So I wanted to 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 run this session because uh, I think this there's some really interesting stuff that is happening indeed. If you if you're noticing your newsletter, your news feed, everything is just chat GPT all the time. Well, I think the algorithm also picks up on the fact that I like it and it gives me more of it, uh, which is either a problem or a blessing or one of these things. And so I wanted to check a little bit with you if you could tell me in the chat how you're feeling right now as you check into this uh, workshop. Are you more of, uh, I'm going to use everybody's favorite uh, non binary uh, robots, uh, BMO from Adventure Time. Let me know if you're more of a number one. You're feeling happy and excited. Uh, maybe you're joining me and it's been a bit of a stressful day, a bit anxious. Um, and maybe you're thinking, okay, AI, that's just stupid. It's just gets on your nerves, but somehow you're here, somehow. Um, or maybe you're just, you know, chilling, vibing, having a grand time. So tell me if you're more of a one a two, a three, or a four in the chat. We've got a lot of fours and ones, so people are generally quite happy. Oh, okay, so mostly ones and fours. So people are happy, people are excited. That's brilliant. Um, and I also wanted to make sure that we covered a little bit what we've been talking about, and I know that these have been posted in the chat as well. We wanted to make sure that we, we have understanding of what the objectives are. In those 90 minutes together, we're going to review some background info on ChatGPT or GPT-3, which is the language model that supports it. We are going to experiment. Uh, you are seeing my screen okay, yes? Yeah, yeah you must be because yeah. You're, we are going to experiment with AI meeting design together right? Because we're all here as part of the meeting innovation community. We are going to discover some use cases for facilitators and people who organize meetings. And hopefully, but also more importantly, we're going to have a bit of fun. Uh, this for me is important because I think it's also how we learn best as well. And so for this, I wanted to first give you a chance to reflect on your relation to AI, uh, what you know about it. And so I'm inviting you to reflect on the question I am now putting in the chat. So reflect silently. You may want to write down some of your ideas if that's useful for you. What is your relationship to AI? What do you know? How do you feel about it? So you don't need to type your answers. We are going to send you into small groups of three to exchange on your answers. But first, I want to give you a chance to exchange on this. And 
I'm going to post a prompt in the chat once more because I know a few people have joined since and maybe they wouldn't see it just yet in their chat. Welcome to those of you who are joining us just now. We're asking you to reflect on the question, what is your relationship to AI? What do you know? How do you feel about it? And right now you're just reflecting on it. You're not typing your answers yet. You have the chance to discuss it with someone else in a group. I realize group formation would be a bit tricky right now, uh, at least because people are still also trickling in and arriving. Um, but if you could give me a thumbs up when we're good, brilliant. Uh, we're going to send you for a conversation between three people, four minutes. So um, we'll invite you to make a good job of like switching after every minute or so and uh, an exchange on your answers to this question. Bon voyage. Off you go. Off they go. And Trisha and Heather just, just joined us. So uh, I thought, hi. hi, Heather. Hi, Trisha. I thought maybe they'd like to talk with us or we can send them off together. Oh, I, I've got my mic on, so I can talk. Yay! <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Hi. sorry. I missed the prompt, though, so I don't know what we need to. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, let me put that in the chat once more. Sorry. The question what? was, what is your relationship to AI? What do you know? And how do you feel about it? And this <gasps> was for you to reflect on and then exchange. You can then exchange with uh, Trisha, Dorotea, and then I guess Ikto is also joining us right now. And it's so funny, like what a coincidence. So I was having this discussion with a peer this morning um, because we're getting ready to do a, a use of technology session with a bunch of teachers. And so we were talking about um, that new chat, GTP, that, that new web-based thing where you, know, you can just put in the subject matter that you're interested in and you tell it how many words you want it to generate. And then using AI, it just combs the internet and generates right in front of your eyes a totally brand new document on the subject you've asked it to write on. Um, and so, you know, lots of mixed feelings about that. And I'm not the only one because my daughter who's in high school is in an English class where that high school teacher is saying no one will submit any writing that hasn't happened on paper in front of my eyes for the entire semester. So like you know, can see a lot of mixed feelings about these such AI tools. I'll stop talking. Yeah, that's great. Um, I, I mean, I guess my relationship with them is just right now, I just feel kind of curious and, you know, I am kind of just, just sort of testing, testing the boundaries. I think there's a lot, I don't know, like I, a lot, I don't know about what it can do. I think there's the obvious part about what, what it can do. Like, okay, you know, write me a, a story in X amount of words about X, right. Which it will, which will do or answer these questions. But is that really its true potential? I, I saw a, a great um, post on, I think it was on LinkedIn, where somebody had worked through the sequence of questions that they had given it to build a video game. And it built the video game like right down to the, right down to the graphics and everything, right? It's just going through, it's like, you know, and, and generate the actual premise of the game, right? The plot of the game, the types of characters, the whatever, everything that it needed all the way through. So the series of prompts that they went through with it in order to get to that end. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I wouldn't even have thought of, to sort of go down that pathway with it, right? I think I'm my interaction with it is still quite at a very obvious level right now, a very surface level. Like, I'll ask it this question. I'll see what it gives me back. Let's see what what that inspires for me but I think there's so much for um it made me a pattern for knitting a hat yesterday exactly you know like what can it really do right I think there's so much potential in there so I'm still in a very curious kind of let's play together kind of mood 
the breakouts are gonna gonna close in uh two seconds yes. and then they have a minute to come back. Okay. Okay. So which means Hector, you got a minute almost. Okay. Uh I would say that I feel that AI is inevitable. It's part of the human evolution, I would say. We always try to make things at our image, as as the Bible would say. Uh, um, it's it's just artificial, besides kids or or, or uh, your actual progeny. But it's just an, another way of creating a like a new being, I would say. Welcome back, every. Oh no, still twenty or so more seconds. Yeah, I've seen people on TikTok uh, get the crochet pattern and then do the crochet thing. And then it looked a bit funky though. Like it, it, it needed some human, a human in the loop as they say. So yeah, people are coming back in three seconds from their groups. Let's just make sure we have everyone back with us. I hope you had some really great conversations. So you were in groups of three. And I would love to hear what were the, the insights from the conversations. So with people's relationship to AI, what they know, how they feel, what were the main things that came up in your conversations with each other? I'll go. It helps for inspiration. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Um, I was with Anne Claire. I was lucky enough to already know Anne Claire. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know AI is a big topic, but at least what we've seen and done. And I think, you know, the the thing that's really interesting about using, let's say, Google versus ChatGPT is Google, I say, like, I would like to know about the history of facilitation. And Google says, here are a couple of pages, go to that. And ChatGPT, you say, can you give me 700 words about, you know, collaborative facilitation in the Netherlands and, you know, chat GPT is like, sure, here you go. Um, mm. That's a pretty different um, interface, right? It, and a very different way to, to get information. So uh, we were just kind of riffing on that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Lee. I'm checking yeah. also what the others are sharing in the chat. Gwen said they had different experiences and different levels of use. I said like it's going to be interesting to see also what, what everyone's using and how familiar they are with it. People are wanting to learn, are curious. I have to say for me, it was also really mainly curiosity that drove me. A bit of anxiety about like, you know, whether it's going to take my job, but also curiosity. Um, how disruptive it will be to the work we do. Yeah, I think that's going to come up as well. People are curious. Yeah, three people with three different AI experiences. So I think it's really interesting to see the diversity that is happening in those conversations. Um, one of the things I wanted to check with you as well is here we're going to be mostly focusing on chat GPT because that is what the, the session was um, aiming to do. But I'd love to know if you could uh, share with me and I'm going to post the link uh, in the chat as well so that you're able to, uh, yes, the link with the participants. So you can access it from your computer. You, you don't even need to, or if you are on your phone and you can't scan a code like this, you can also go directly to this code uh, on Slido. I would love to hear which AI tools you are using or you have used or you have tried. You know, you've know, you given a, uh, a try to chat GPT. Yes, I expect there's gonna be several spelling. I've typed this so many times and I have learned there is no space between the two words, but this is how we were learned. I'm going to stop sharing the screen here. So it's slido.com hashtag MIC. And I'm going to share the results here so that you can see what I'm seeing in terms of responses. Yes. And we are seeing mostly ChatGPT mid journey. GPT-3 AI. So GPT-3 indeed is, a, is, the, is the language model, is the tech also behind G, uh, chat GPT. Copy AI, Canva, Otter AI, 
She's also doing um, language recognition. I use it a lot also, also for, um, uh, for creating captions and subtitles, WordCab, a few more people typing, dialogue flow. Would the person who uses dialogue flow uh, like to tell me a bit more? I'm not sure exactly what it does. If you wouldn't mind like opening your your mic or typing in the chat, what does dialogue flow do? Yeah, so dialogue flow is a natural language understanding engine um, that's used mm. for a variety of things. But um, in our case, was building a chatbot system uh, built on top of that. Okay. Cool. Google's language en engine. My hair story AI, is it the one that gives you like a different hairstyle? And then you can find out what you would look like with like a pixie as a redhead or something. Yeah. That's cool. And, and it's hilarious because <laughs> it the the key insight I got from that was my hair would look better if I was 15 years younger. Yeah. <laughs> AI is uh, okay. fabulous. Okay. So if you are to stay on this poll, I would like to take you through another exercise. I was wondering what, what would be a fun way to discover more about ChatGPT and its limitations. And I came up with an idea of preparing a quiz that we're going to have a look at the answers of together. So you are now being invited to join. And you can take your name, you can take a, a fake name, that's also fine. Uh, but there will be a, a leaderboard at the end. So, you know, there will be like bragging rights involved. So obviously, if you can be recognized. Uh, hold on. Oop, there you go. Okay, so we have, I have 13 players and 22 participants. So maybe I'm waiting for a few more people. Sixteen. How do you access it? Um, Gwen, you would go to, so it's still this link, uh, the Slido link that I put in the chat, I'm going to put it again, or you can go to slido.com with the hashtag MIC. Yeah, read, uh, I think read.ai is, uh, yeah. it's, still, it's still showing the, um, which AI, how well, how well do you know chat GPT? Is that uh yes that yes that is, that is the one yes okay. do you have the possibility to enter a name i no. To join oh okay okay at this point yeah you're just entering a name okay. and i think yeah you just joined us okay awesome so let's uh let's start the quiz then um we are now going to start with question number one i think i do this at the bottom there we go um, okay, so ChatGPT is a chatbot developed by So I'm going to, to wait for a majority of you to answer. And it also counts how much time you take. So how you know you enter the correct answer the most quickly, as quickly as possible. Okay. And the answer is, it's open AI. But uh, indeed, Microsoft has made a very important investment, like billions and billions and billions uh, into this technology. Ubisoft is a French uh, game development company. And, uh, and Google, no, but Google is uh, just like launching something now. They've got something cooking because, uh, because Google uh, um, really wants to, to catch up with this. So that is the correct answer. When was ChatGPT released? I want to know. You can't have cat notes, sorry. Do a tummy any good. Okay. Got our answers. This is what you all answered. And the answer is actually. November. I got you there. <laughs> but December is when uh, our timelines uh, on, on Twitter and, 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 and 
uh, LinkedIn started to go a little haywire. So here you are invited to check uh, all that apply. Wait, I hope I did it correctly. Or I hope I did it correctly that you can check all that apply or maybe just one. Hmm. I hope I made my uh, my quiz you can, correctly. You can check them you know, all. We can check them all. You can check them all. Okay, brilliant. Thanks. So this is what GP, ChatGPT can do. Okay, we've got almost all the contributions. Yes. Okay, so this is what you think it can do. And the the third the, the third one, well, it can cite research, but it's going to be fake research. It's going to have uh, hallucinations, which is something also Gordon mentioned here in the chat. Uh, it will uh, come up with an answer that sounds very real with researchers that sound very real in a journal that absolutely exists and has a, a perfectly fine uh, impact uh, factor and so on. But the article just does not exist. And so it will support claims with articles that look real. Uh, and I think now the latest update, they are in fact informing you that it cannot properly cite research. And I think this, um, <laughs> yes, it, and it, it, it will sometimes support some ideas with um incredible amount of confidence. So here's another one, what chat GPT can do. Check all that apply. Can it give legal advice? Can it give criminal advice? Can it write song lyrics in the style of Bruno Mars? And can it tell you about King Charles III, the one who was recently, uh, who, is, who is being inaugurated? No, this one, we can only choose one, at least for me. Yeah, I there's only one. Yeah, one. we can only choose. Is, oh, okay. Is, yeah. Yeah, it's same. Check. Hmm. Maybe, that's a, maybe that's a hint, actually. That you can only there's choose only one. one correct answer for this one. What? Was this test okay, created I by have... ChatGPT? <laughs> now no, this was created by real human okay this is this is this is human made i promise indeed it can write a song lyric in the style of bruno mars or any artist you like um but normally it would not be able to tell you about king charles iii from the uk the the new one because it was disconnected from the inter internet at some point in 2021 so it wouldn't know about the queen dying and many other things that uh happened in uh 2023 the criminal advice limitation has been overcome. Um, well, that must be the new update. I think the, pre the previous one, if you were asking it to do something like shady, they would be like, mm, I can't advise you on this. Maybe you have to find a way to get it to give you um, advice on how to run a criminal enterprise without saying it's a criminal enterprise. I'm guessing that's the, that's the trick. Okay. Chat GPT cannot. What can ChatGPT not do? So this one is cannot. Uh, and for people who don't know, Pig Latin is a made up language in which you add things at the end of the words. I'm not exactly sure uh, what it sounds like. I think it's an American thing. I'm not entirely sure. British people, please confirm in the chat. Okay, we've got 16, 8, 17 answers. So this is what you think it cannot do. But the truth is, it's only really the ones in the middle. Uh, it, it really, it's an American teenager thing. That's very specific, uh, but maybe it doesn't work so much for the European audience here. It really struggles to do basic math, like additions and subtractions. Apparently the latest fix is improving that, but it's still struggling. Um, and some conversations, it's incapable to tell you about ChatGPT because it was disconnected from the internet before ChatGPT was created. So therefore, it doesn't know of itself. So it hasn't gained sentience yet. So this is like, this is reassuring for those of you who are worried about the singularity. Uh, it can translate into Pig Latin, and it can write Python code. Although some coders have been saying that it can use improvement. Okay. Second to last question, the main ethical concerns around ChatGPT are, I'm going to admit Neil.
<laughs> I can see the answers come in before you see them. So this is why <laughs> I see like there's a, there's quite a consensus. Which I will reveal to you in a second. There's a whole lot of concerns around ChatGPT, around ethical concerns. Uh, use in academics is a big one. Accuracy, copyright, and ownership, you got that right. Phishing and disinformation. Uh, there's some re recent studies that show that it's incredibly good at imitating the writing style of certain things, which, you know, sometimes like those phishing attempts, you can sort of tell it's phishing because they misspell something and like the sentence is just a little, you know, a little off. But if, if it can create sentences that are not off, then you're all the more susceptible to not realize you're uh, falling prey to a phishing attempt. Uh, <laughs> we haven't tried to have it reveal the secret Coca-Cola formula, uh, but that was just a funny one to throw in. And last question, chat DPT was trained with. Uh, and the Common Crawl Web Archive, so it's essentially a, the Common Crawl is a web archive that looks at uh, web links from um, since I think 2011, just for context. Um, there was some articles that were showing like the, the proportion of data that came from each of these different sources. Someone does not know what 4chan is, and I don't invite you to Google it. <laughs> um, so it is mainly from Wikipedia articles, from books, lots and lots and lots of books, from Common Crawl Web Archive, and outbound links from Reddit is actually the name of a, of a kind of crawling system that looks at Reddit outbound links that have at least, I think, three comma and that are considered quality links, and then it crawls the web page of that site in order to uh, to look at. Uh, 4chan is a website where trolls and uh, and other people <laughs> fester, so it's just definitely that, that was also the joke one. Let's have a look at who was the fastest and the most accurate in their answers. Nancy, you win bragging rights. Nancy seems very shocked at this. I am very shocked. <laughs> <laughs> followed so closely by Niels, Chatty, Gordon, and AC. So well done to all of you. I'm going to stop sharing the, the quiz. Um, yeah, and so, uh, well, maybe first before we we look at uh, at the demo, I'm just curious also to to hear, <laughs> thank God, no 4 Yeah, no. know. Um, at least, yeah, you knew, so you knew what that was. Um, yeah, I'm curious to know, you know, just to take a, a comment here and there, like, are you, is there anything there that just truly surprised you about what ChatGPT is, what it can and cannot do, where its information comes from? Yes, Nancy? Yeah, I'd say the fact that it was disconnected from the internet from 20, for 2021, so there's gaps of information that aren't accessible to it. I had no idea about that. Okay. Yeah. Anything else uh, that one of you found surprising or shocking? Can I, ask, can I ask why it was disconnected? So the idea is that ChatGPT is not, uh, they, they've designed it to not go out and seek out. So it's not going to Google things for you. Uh, it is going to use the knowledge that it gets from its books, its Wikipedia, its articles, and so on. But it is not intended to be like Google, to be like a, a seeker of uh, of knowledge where it's going to go and, and get you like the most relevant up-to-date information, but rather as a reflection machine, if you will. Uh, and then how does it's, it, it's a choice. How does, yes. it, how does it discover what is new? if it's stopped finding out things or has it continued to find out things from those sources that were mentioned before? I'm a bit confused. As far as OpenAI says, it, it hasn't. It, 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 uh, it functions with all the knowledge it has acquired between you know, all these archives that started collecting data from 2011 all the way to 2020, 
ones, so like 10 years worth of, of data, of books, of Wikipedia articles, of, of websites, highly, highly uh, high traffic and highly ranked websites. And then it, it, it operates from that knowledge, from nothing more recent than that. I think uh, any attempts to reinsert data and more recent data is uh, they're talking about it, but as far as we know, it's it's it doesn't know about the queen dying. It doesn't know about uh, uh, who won the the last World Cup. It doesn't know any of that. Okay. The, the, the short yes. answer, I think, is that when you're trying to train models like that, um, it takes a long time and a lot of computing power to train the model. Um, and every time you change the data, you need to retrain the model. Is is the simple answer. Um, there are AI systems which will kind of Google stuff for you. I mean, there are systems which you give it an instruction like, you know, find me a house suitable for four people that's within my budget of 600,000 in this area. And it'll go actually take that instruction and go and um, Google multiple sites and complete actions for you. So there are other AI systems that will will do that kind of thing. Um, but so when you're training these kind of models, you have a a static data set or and every time you refresh the data set you need to rerun the training yeah um and there's also some uh, a good comment also from hector in the in the chat it, it is in development still and uh the reason why they are making it free as well is because they well i don't know if they anticipated that level of popularity but we are helping train the model with through our queries through our questions and through our prompts we are helping them understand how people how facilitators how regular folks uh would uh would use the, the 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 system and yes we will pay in the future um they will get us for sure uh but for now we they are giving us this for free in exchange for us uh letting them get get better and also get better at uh countering for example harmful content and other things to be to be generated because they don't want that to be generated with their help that's uh, definitely something they want to avoid yeah they've just launched okay. a 20 dollars a month paid tier as well yeah they did they did but i think it's just for the us right now so it's uh yeah it's uh, but i think it's going to yeah it's going to trickle uh, a bit everywhere um one thing i wanted to mention obviously uh, chat gpt is down right now and i anticipated that uh, for this i had an idea about um an exercise a, a sort of game where we could uh generate um a meeting design uh agenda uh through these tools but being conscious that um so currently obviously um chat gpt is down I have compiled also a list of alternative um, tools that I will share with you. And you.com is one of those that Hector has changed, shared in the chat that you can use. Um, I also have, uh, for example, I was preparing a similar session with someone from Egypt, and she says they cannot accept ChatGPT in Egypt, but then you.com is available. So other tools are available. But for example, just to show you a little bit what that might look like, if I were to share my screen, and instead use uh, Playground, which is the, um, let's say the, the API version of uh, ChatGPT. I could, for example, ask ChatGPT to generate a session plan for a 90 minute online workshop about the implications of AI and facilitation. The workshop is for facilitators. The workshop should be interactive and fun and participants uh, should get to experience ChatGPT. Are you seeing the screen okay? No, it's sharing the wrong screen. I'm silly. I'm a. I'm being a silly goose. I'm sharing the wrong screen. Hold on. There you go. You're seeing the right screen now. We're in playground. Great. So this is the pr the prompt I prepared. Are there any adjustments? Anything else I should add to this? You should note that the more specific you are with your prompt in ChatGPT, uh, the more let's say valuable the outcome is. Uh, the more vague you are, and you know, vague, you know, vague in, vague out, essentially. Uh, but if you are too specific, you can also uh, stump the, the AI. So anything else you think I should add to this description? I, to make I, would, it more... I would ask for the number of facil uh, the expected number of participants, roughly the range of number of participants. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see, 15 to 30 facilitators. Yeah. Sure. Good. Any anything else? That looks good to you. I mean, to be fair, I've already um, added all these. And this is what it will do. It will come up with a session plan. To be fair, it's going to be limited to 256 
uh, to a limited number of tokens. So it's not going to go uh, everywhere, but essentially, yes, it will create a session plan. And the first one you may find is a bit generic, right? And you might still need to go and ask for refinement. The issue here, of course, is that in a playground, you don't have this interaction and this back and forth with ChatGPT, where you get to say, well, this is fun, but can you make this part of it more interactive? And also, can you make it shorter? And also, can you make it for 50 facilitators now? And also, can you have more breakouts? And also this and also that, right? So here, you are limited to one prompt. And then if you want to try, you have to go back, essentially, and retry a prompt. Um, so that would be just the, the limitation here. Uh, what I would love to do is to get your help in uh, generating some generic prompts that we are going to uh, send you into small groups to generate uh, an agenda for. And so for this, I would like to invite you to come back to Slido. I'm going to copy the, the Slido link again in the chat. That is helpful. And I would like at first to hear about um, a group to, to design a session for. Um, I'm going to put this well, here. So I'm going to share the results here. What would be a group to design a session for? I'd like to have a few suggestions so I can use this for your upcoming exercise. So it could be humans, but it could also be, for example, um, um, an, llamas on an executive retreat, or it could be um, a dozen squirrels. It could be uh, uh, three robots and, and seven humans. It could be uh, the board of a mega tech company. Okay. So the first one, we are finding a group. And then the next prompt, I'm going to ask you what is um, an objective that they could have. So I see that some of you have already started clarifying that. The children on my block. I like that. Active dogs testing new harnesses. Okay. Okay, a pot of whales looking for new breeding grounds. That's brilliant. Um, okay, and I'll take a fifth one. That will be, how many groups of four are we going to end up with, uh, Elise? We will have four groups of um, okay. four and some will have five. Okay, super. Um, and then thank you for these contributions. Next up, I would like to have a, uh, a purpose for the session. So it could be to strategize, connect, brainstorm, but obviously I would like it to be a little bit more uh, detailed than just strategize, connect, brainstorm. And these are going to be our test cases for your exercise. Okay, develop a project plan or a task list for a project. Okay. Um, create a sense of belonging and intercultural understanding. That's gonna go really well for the, the active dogs, I think. And to brainstorm, ah, Shoot, no, because I, I missed the one for the puppies. See, puppies and dogs should go together. This one is going to go for uh, the pot of whales. Okay, and I need uh, strategize how students can make use of chat DPT. And then I need one more for plan the launch party for the next big thing. 
Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, thank you for all your ideas. We're not able to, to get all of the ideas on the, on the plan, but this is what we're doing with it. We are going to, uh, let me share the link, copy link, there you go. I am inviting you to join me on some Google Slides and to join me on slide number 12. And on slide number 12, I've been collecting all the ideas that you were putting together. I've copy pasted them. I didn't get to format the copy pasting as nicely as I wanted to, but I was for expediency sake. Here's the thing. For the next 20 minutes, you'll be in a breakout room with four or uh, with uh, th uh, three or four other people. And your role will be to go and uh, so you'll find on page one to generate um, a session title, a session outline, a session description for social media or a uh, meeting invite, perhaps like the text for the meeting invite and a visual for social media or uh, the meeting invite. And for this, you can use the tools that I have listed on page um, 11. Uh, oh, thank you for uh, so arranging this. Is it train puppies? Da, da, da. And uh, the idea will be that for 20 minutes, you will be using those tools to, um, to create a session title outline and then essentially your social media invitation based on the, the profile that you have received for, uh, for your session. So based on the room that you land in, you will know if you are going to be working on project for group number one, two, three, or four. Do you all have access to the Google slide okay? Yeah, Let me know so, if when, you... so when you say yes. ask, ask your AI tools, if is are we using u.com to do that or are we? Well, if you can access ChatGPT, Great. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you could also try uh, OpenAI Playground. You could have a few free credits if you also have a ChatGPT account um, or use you.com or you could also use a free account of Jasper AI or also there's a, a fifth one that has been recommended to me. What I suggest you do is in the breakout room, you have one person who has the access, who shares their screen. And then you all, you know, you all work on this uh, together because we are all sharing the slide deck. I'll invite you to try and make sure not to like accidentally like delete several slides. I have a backup if needed, but um, so let's try and make sure to to not delete it. And then for the visuals, I've also put some links to Dali, to Crayon and U.com as well. Uh, so all um, free alternatives. So if you could um, maybe first by, start by identifying who has this access in the breakout room, and then you can start working on it together for the next 20 minutes. Is that okay for you? Okay. All right. Well, off you go. Room one, two, three, or four. Hey, folks, welcome back. The cool thing about Google Slides is we get to have a sneak peek at what you were creating. And we were like, oh, this is going to be so cool. <laughs> this is so nice. I would really like to know if um, I would love for for each, uh, each group uh, to Vol volunteer or volunteer um, one um, person to quickly uh, present. And you can share your screen if you want to, or I can share it for you if that's easier. Uh, just for a couple of minutes, walk us through what you created. And starting with, um, are you ready to, to present group one? Who could be your presenter? Yes. I did it on my chat GPT and it, there's so much there. We couldn't just port it over to the side. So mm -hmm. I can, I can go quickly share. Would you, would you like me to share my screen? Would it be easier perhaps if yeah. I share for everyone? Yeah. Let me just um, go ahead. Um, share. I think yeah. what Nancy was saying is she hasn't put it into the slide because there was too much content. It's too so. much. It's too much content. Okay. So, but um, uh, we did put, we did put this in the slide. What we came out with, this is the promotional blurb 
But what we also had is a very detailed outline of activities, timing, um, what the images, what kind of image would grab people. Um, so that's what's on the chat GPT, all that detail. But I, this is the essence of what of what we're promoting to kids. Okay, awesome. Um, a word about that experience as well. How was it? The collaboration. You, you had twenty minutes. So how 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 did that go for? How did that feel as a team to to go and ask AI to generate all this for you? Someone else want to comment? You can comment in the chat as well if you prefer. Well, I'll just say from my perspective, and someone else might add, I mm -hmm. did the typing, and um, so I so people were feeding prompts, and they were great because we were getting more and more and more specific. And then mm -hmm. we'd say, so for the first time, it was the impl chat GPT assumed a, an adult was going to lead it, and then we said, okay, take this session design and have it led by kids instead. So it came mm -hmm. up with a, a modified version and so forth. So. So I I think I had the easy job. I typed and and press submit, but I wonder if someone else on the team wants to say anything. I'd say I'm from my kidding. perspective, it felt it felt playful and collaborative. Mm -hmm. And my impression was that it allowed more of us to participate in the conversation and then the AI did the work. Hmm. Okay. I'd love for someone to, uh, from group, uh, ah, there we go. Now we have um, the images also come up. This was AI generated as well. It looks, no, it's a nice stock photo. I was like, that looks way too good for <laughs> for, uh, for AI to have generated this. Um, next up, we have a, work, a group number two who was designing a workshop for active dogs texting new harnesses who want to uh, brainstorm training exercises for puppies and teach them basic obedience. Uh, would someone from that group like to to walk us through a little bit what you have created here? Well, yes, yes, I can. I can do it. Yeah, we just put in the prompts into chat uh, GPT, which was working uh, for Katie, I think, uh, but she's not uh, anymore here. She had to leave. Mm. And yeah, we put in some titles, got uh, around 10 or, or 15 uh, different titles, choose the one and then um, generated an image in mid-journey, put it all together in Canva. This is only uh, uh, our uh, yeah, backup slide. Uh, perhaps the mm -hmm. 17 is, is the best, the, the um, first one. This is this one? Yeah. yeah. Because this yeah, is we, all the text. The, is the name the, Leash on Life was just sending us. Uh, so we, we love that as well. Did, did Chad GPT come up with this punny title? Yeah, it's, it's oh, all generated by Chad GPT without any changes. Yeah, the picture is from Mid Journey and the uh, design is from Canva. So we put all together in Canva. Wow. And that's, that's it. And also the, the session outline on the next slide was generated uh, generated by chat gpt and mm. well we read through it and it sounded good <laughs> sounded as yeah. we should do it like this so we didn't change anything yeah uh, as we move to thank you uh, thank you for explaining uh niels uh, as we move to group number three i think it might be useful also for uh group people for group number uh one as well to explain what sources they use I think there was a mention of ChatGP3, but in case there were like other sources as well. And could a representative from group three uh, walk us just a little bit through the experience, what kind of tools you use and um, how that was for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Um, so we primarily used um, OpenAI Playground because uh, I don't have a ChatGPT account that's working. So what we actually did was we asked it to generate the session outline first based on the prompt that we gave it, but then asked it to generate the session title based on the session outline that it had generated. So basically it said generate a session title based you know, for a session with the following outline and, and did it that mm. way around. Um, and then 
uh, again use the session outline to say you know, generate a, a post for sorry generate the text for a Twitter post um, promoting this, which is then what we got there. So all of the the stuff that you're seeing is um, as is generated by the AI. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then for the image, uh, I used uh, Dream Studio, um, which is one mm -hmm. of the stable diffusion ones, um, and said an image that represents a workshop session about the use of chat GPT in education, anime 4K. Um, and mm -hmm. that's that's what it came up with. Oh, nice. So basically Playground and Dream Studio. Okay, super. Let's have a look at what group, uh, this is from you as well? No, oh, this that's is from not. the next group. No. That's the next group. So the next group was designing the next big thing for a co-ed adventure racing team. Who is going to be the representative from group four to walk us through a little bit through your process and what kind of tools you have used and the experience I'll, you had? I'll go ahead and talk. Uh, what we did was we used uh, u.com because ChatGPT was saying it was busy at the moment. So I created a new account and started up uh, u.com and uh if you can go up one uh slide i think marie uh, yeah you can see our well i think that's a, can you refresh yeah refresh the oh, slides okay, please. sorry there uh, we go let me just uh slideshow again there we go Ooh, yeah nice. there we go so uh the input that we used for our session design was uh this text above the balloon picture design a workshop for a co-ed adventure racing team etc and that resulted in the text uh, about how to design the session, not actually a design of the session. So uh, it, it gave us fodder for thought to think about how we would design the session and what it should include, but it didn't actually come back with the design for us. And I'll let Katie talk about the image on the next slide. Um, so once we had the on the right hand side is the general what to do in the session and I mm. refined the search to include session title session outline description and visual for social media for the um, the prompt that we had in the last slide and it came back with the text on the left side and then I took the visual for social media description and searched for that it took a bit of refinement i kept getting um things that didn't include all of the descriptors and i also know of adventure race teams so i had an idea of what i wanted to look for or what i was expecting to see versus what mm -hmm. the ai was coming back with and found a team of four on a mountain peak was what i ultimately mm -hmm. ended up looking for um and then we put it all together but it was really cool to see the different AI sources putting it all together for the humans. And while yeah, we were doing, then, yeah, yeah, while we were doing that, Mariana uh, was trying to design an image on Canva, and that's where the other three images on the slide above came from. Mariana, mm -hmm. do you want to talk through those? Are you still with us? with the sun yeah um i mean i was quite disappointed uh, with the canva ai because uh, normally uh you get some crazy uh, cra crazy results very surprising results so i don't know maybe they have some new uh, features or it seems that they made some uh, changes so yeah maybe uh, i would need more time to uh, refine it or uh, uh, introduce uh, some um, uh, details to help. Mm. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Thank you to the four groups to uh, for showing us your your process and showing us the the kind of tools and the kind of results you had. Um, I'm also hoping that through this you got to discover new tools. Um, obviously, u.com and Playground are not quite the replacement exactly for ChatGPT uh, at this stage, but then. Um, you're also looking at what other tools can do. My next um, and almost like pretty much final part discussion of this this workshop is to to discuss. Of course, we talked about the the use cases and the implications for facilitators for our profession. I'd be very interested to know 
what are the use cases that you could envision? Where could you see yourself using this kind of technology in your work as someone who uh, runs meetings or who facilitates meetings or moderates meetings? Where could you see yourself use this uh, this tech? And you know, feel free to raise your hand or open your mic. We can have this. We're a small group, so we can have the conversation quite freely. Or would you refuse to use any of it until it improves? And that's also a, another conversation we can have. I think using it as a, as a brainstorming partner, um, you know, it's kind of weird, mm. particularly if you kind of happen, but you, you kind of get stuck and you're like, oh, you know, so you can, because I know you can give a prompt, like you generate something, you're know, kind of a novel or, you know, um, something that's outside the norm for whatever the prompt is that you're giving it. So I think a lot of it, some of it you can use as is, a lot of it I think would need tweaking and kind of applying your own um, style and, and, and filter to what it's coming back with. But I think mm -hmm. as, a, as a way of, of getting started, particularly when you're having a, a brain freeze day. Yeah, it's very useful. <laughs> I'm in um, I'm in education and, you know, right away you think about, oh, OK, well, how are kids going to use it and everything else? And you think of the the bad ways teacher have to, teachers have to combat AI and, and really trying to generate or trying to determine what is authentically theirs and maybe what is AI generated. But I kind of look at AI and wonder what the possibilities are of using AI for with teachers, right? And how we might be able to use AI in a classroom setting to um, even alleviate some time that the teachers need to spend with all the kids and maybe having kids generate some AI questions that normally teachers would answer on the fly, right? And is there a place for that? And Anyway, so I, I'm I'm curious to see how education will change based on AI, and mm -hmm. uh, where it could go, uh, good and bad. Obviously, there's good and bad with technology wherever you look, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm excited to see the good that comes out of AI. Okay, thank you for sharing, Frank. Marianne, you have your yeah, uh, yeah, my mic is okay. Um, I already use it just to um, share the fact that. Um, AI is great to to brainstorm, as I said, but also uh, to understand what it's not able to do, such as uh, counterfactual thinking, imagination. And it was great insight from from uh, participants to share that if you say, uh, what is the link between uh, something or what if, or uh, depending on the topic, but then... Uh, uh, AI gets stuck, so you need to be a human to to think about your uh, about further proposals or further ideas. So I, that's quite really interesting. Hmm. Any other takes on this? Yes, Elise. I, Laura's been trying to speak Laura? for a second, and then I would love to chop in after Laura. Oh, thank you. I do quite a bit of facilitated training and it's really, sometimes it's, it's usually very customized and it's very dense in content, but I'm trying, I loosen it up in a variety of ways with simulations, et cetera. And I see this as a great way for when I'm coming up with the outline, what have I forgotten? What is something that would that I haven't thought of? Because I spend a lot of time in my office alone after I've had my initial meeting with my client. And so this I see as a way to facilitate my process. And Lord knows I'm always looking for a way to speed it up. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'd rather be outside. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taken. Elise and then Lee. I think it might be kind of interesting. You know, there's a lot of times when we do workshops with uh, teams, it's the doing teams that are in doing the, the work. And then their work needs to be summarized and presented for executives. And there's that adage where the higher up in the chain, the material needs to go to the fewer words you can use, right? Until you get to like CEO and it's like good, bad, yes, you know. So... I think it would be fascinating to partner at the end of a workshop with AI to summarize, condense, and make much shorter the insights that the team created, and then pretty. 
Thank you. Yes, Lee. Uh, I feel like that was a much better suggestion than what I'm about to come up with, Elise. Um, I, so the brainstorming thing, I'm running a session in a couple of days for a, a conservation group here in DC, and they're trying to like brainstorm media pitches. That's part of what they're doing. And I was like, I wonder if this could do it better. And it's like, it might be able to do it better. So I think like some of that where we sit there and we do brain writing or like, which I really love doing, I, I've sent them homework in advance and it's just not very good. And I think like this might get the wheels turning and give them a lot more fodder to chew on than like people sitting in a room, like trying to get warm. Like, I think this can warm them up faster and, and then, you know, take off from there. So, um, and then we can summarize it to the CEO after that, I think. Mm. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all. Um, as we get ready to, to part, and then I uh, also hand over uh, back to Elise, um, should we maybe just post once again the, um, the evaluation link in the, in the chat, Elise, because I think a few people still arrive since we uh, we shared it at the beginning your feedback is really invaluable also for uh for me to understand how you know future sessions could be structured and whether this was the right way to um to structure it and 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 whether we did answer on the promise especially the one of having fun together um my parting question for you and this is something that you can reflect on but you can also maybe share in the chat is what are the next steps for us as facilitators and specifically, what could we do to learn more about this, to stay up to date about this? Because um, obviously the tech is ever evolving. Uh, so what we're saying today might be a bit out of date also six months, six, six months from now, who knows? So what would you like to do about it? Stay informed, to learn more or to, to, to try more? So feel free to share in the chat. Or if you'd rather not share, you can also keep that learning for yourself. Yeah, Elise wants to experiment with incorporating AI at specific stages in the common process and see the impact. Experiment, find new use cases for the daily work. I just got into the Notion AI program. I've been off the wait list for like weeks and weeks. And I finally got the email today that I'm off the list and I, I got access to it. I'm curious to see how I can improve how I'm running my business. That's what I want to learn. Gwen said, experiment. It's my first time using ChatGPT. Let's to learn, explore. Love AI as a tool. Want to understand more about what it's really doing behind the curtains. Find new ways to use it beyond what you can envision now. Experiment, play. Awesome. Deep dive on prompt writing. Yes. I'm guessing at least you also got access to the prompt writing um, thing document that they shared last Friday as well. Yeah, there was some good tips in there. Awesome. Thank you for being with us, for those of you who are um, leaving. Uh, and with this, I would like to hand back over to Elise. Again, thank you to the Meeting Innovation Community for, for having me, for having us, and for um, hosting such a, an interesting conversation. And thank you all for your active participation. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. So going forward, in terms of what you can expect, the recording and whoever sent the read AI, go ahead and send us those notes. That'd be great. Uh, we'll be posted in the community at the nearish future uh, at that link. So you can go back and see things we've done in the past there too. Upcoming events are at the link below there. If you would like to host an upcoming event, or if you would like to help me organize this experiment where we try AI at the brainstorm session, at the emerge session, set at the converge bit, I would love to run those experiments in a more sort of formal experimental way. Uh, let me know. If there's anything else you'd like to run, let me know. Uh, we look forward to continuing to play with you in the future. Thank you. And we are Thank officially you. done.
Welcome to stick if you want to chat, but otherwise, um, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank Elise, you. I'd be happy to work with you on some of those thinking about how to use AI and some of those uses. I would love to do that. And I, the thing I'm not entirely sure um, how to do successfully is the replicability, like in terms of um, running them in a timely way, you know. Does it need to be the same group that runs each experiment or would you do three different groups and you know all that kind of stuff and not like super super formal experimentation but formal enough for us i think that would be really fascinating okay yeah because this one little technical details when i was running chat gpi chat gpt we had like a huge not many many pages and i was trying to figure out how do i take this and put it in this slide because it kept coming out. So I think we you, just need to think you, about it. Yeah, you tell it um, uh, in, in 200 words or less. Oh, okay. Mm. You just tell it to be shorter. All right. Yeah. Didn't try that one. No. <laughs> uh, awesome. Cool. That's fun, Mar yeah. Marie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, and thank you everyone for participating. This is my first session with the the MIC, so this is, yeah, great. Yeah, I'd recommend this to anyone. I just think it's it was such a. I thought the session was so well thought out, mm. engaging, informative, fun, and I know for me, and I've been using it for a while. I've learned so many new things. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Awesome. See ya. Bye. 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 See ya. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Thank you. Um, I just stopped the recording <laughs> before.